Cheers. one month of marriage. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shannon, also known as Shan Nonsense, and today we have my husband, Quint, on my channel. And if you just watched my most recent video, if not, check it out above. We did a vegan Thanksgiving meal, so now we're actually eating it, and we're going to do a mukbang while talking about wedding planning, like no BS, real stuff, how to do it. Yeah. So we got engaged on February 25th, 2017. So it was a little over a year and a half, a close to two year engagement. We ultimately decided to have a longer engagement to kind of enjoy that engagement process. So after spending some time being engaged, just totally enjoying ourselves, the big thing you do is you have to make like a mock wedding list because you can't tour a venue until you know that like your max limit because some can only fit 50, some can fit like 500. And then you also need to sit together and just pick a vibe. Something I didn't want was a like just like a reception venue. Uh, if I wanted that, I would have gotten married in my hometown. And so you sit down and pick out your vibe and then you can start looking at the wedding venues because you can't set a date even without that venue. So that should be step number one. The good thing about the venue that we selected was Shannon was very into nature, more floral things. And so we were actually able to find a kind of flower farm that offered flowers from their actual venue and kind of incorporated those into the wedding, which were absolutely great to have. Um, I know flowers can get pretty expensive with weddings, so it definitely helped in terms of budgeting our wedding out. Now our venue cost what most of our friends cost as well, but we got I like $3,000 worth of flowers in that cost. And I'm not good at DIYing, so we also provide the vases and the tablecloths. Like I guess I don't like to craft, so it's a very pretty venue huddle outside. The inside's pretty. They do the vases and flowers. That pretty much was going to be my decor. So I knew that would save money decor-wise, and plus not having to stress out about how to do things that I can't do. Yeah, I know a lot of people were really into like decorations and stuff. You would see that there was like not really much on the tables, but it still looked really nice because it all kind of flowed together. Oh, the next big thing, as soon as you have your date set, is to look for a photographer. The photographers and venues are the two things that book up. And photographers are really important because tons of people are photographers, but not everyone is a wedding photographer. Don't book someone that only does senior portraits or babies or on the free time. Like, this is something you should definitely, like, have a big chunk in your budget for. Because once the wedding is all done, like, this is what you'll have. This is what your ancestors will see is your wedding photos. I saw a lot of bright and airy photography that I actually really liked, but that's not really what I wanted for my wedding. So you just, you know, kind of need to break it down what you like and then start talking to a bunch of photographers because budgets are totally different. We talked to some I was a thousand, to like four thousand to find like what fits for you in the perfect package. It definitely helps in terms of photography though, with if you and your partner essentially have like the same kind of vibes that you want to be portrayed within your photography. So like she said, this airy and such which all look good enough, but like with my kind of hair color, you never know what to expect. And with how we like our kind of editing in terms of photos, we were able to find the perfect photographer for us at an affordable price as well, which was really nice. What's up, Winston? So after that, we actually kind of took a long break. Um, like you mentioned, I had a long engagement because weddings are expensive. So we kind of need to save up more to even make deposits on things. But kind of the big next choice was that everyone in my family is Catholic and they usually have a Catholic ceremony and then like a reception somewhere else. His family is not Catholic. At first we were going to do a Catholic church ceremony, but we aren't members here in Cincinnati so it was going to cost a ton extra. Plus our venue is so pretty outdoors, I thought wow we're going to be wasting like the whole my favorite part of the venue. So ultimately like we had decided we like breaking away from my family's tradition, which it's your wedding, you can totally do that. So we kind of, we did break away, but we found a compromise. We found an officiant online who's a retired Catholic priest. <laughs> What's up Winston? So we made a kind of like Catholic vibe ceremony with them. So it would be outdoors, it wouldn't be Catholic, but have Catholic vibes. So that's always something to think about is how to please family, but still, have your own vibes and feels. Yeah, and with that, the way we kind of set up with him, you could pick and match from other religions. And so the next thing I had to do was get my dress. So I got my dress about 11 months out. Technically I didn't order it until like nine months out. But depending on how long it takes you to find a dress and then to pay it off, pay it off to order it, and when you'll find it, you need at least probably a year 
close to a year finding it. I know some people, you watch the shows, they like cry when they find a dress, they have like the dress. I think I could have found a lot of the dresses just because I'm not attached to objects. Like, I like what I like, I have a style. Um, I really wanted long sleeves, I got long sleeves, but I could have found a lot of other pretty long sleeve dresses at other stores, but this particular one was my favorite there. I liked it, it flattered me, so I went with it. So that's okay that you don't cry, but as long as you feel beautiful, the people you're with like it, you really love it, it's got, it fits everything, then you don't always have that moment. So my next topic is going to be about being a chill Zilla, which is like the opposite of a bride Zilla. So with that, how I stayed pretty chill the whole time. And with that, which is like the long engagement, making lists, like I checked the Knot website has a really great checklist, but then I went through that. And I made a list of my phone to view in more details. I check things off, figure out what we wanted. I'm like, there's no reason to stress. It's your day. You should be happy about it. Of course, like we did have little fights about some things, but just stay chill. We would basically break it out into sections. So she would take a section, I would take a section. So for example, I was kind of in charge of coordinating with the bar, coordinating with getting my suit. I kind of plan the honeymoon out as well. Having that split in duties really helps because it doesn't overload one person or the other. And then obviously if you feel like there's not enough progress that's going with one thing, the other person can help step in and provide some direction if needed as well. Yeah, you so, get a ton of emails, like literally every day I had wedding emails. So it's nice to get the bar, the DJ, and the honeymoon contact, the suit. If I don't have to deal with that, or I had like my dress and the venue and the photographer, and things like that. So I know it's, some people are afraid to put this kind of things on their future husband, but like a DJ, like you can decide it together, but like that's not a hard contact to talk to. Well, a big one is setting your color theme, scheme. I feel like a lot of people pick like two colors and we did the opposite of that. And what we did is since we had those all those flowers, we decided our flowers would be our colors. So we did everything super neutral. The guys were in gray, the girls were in like a mauvey gray, gray napkins, things like the cake were gold, gold writing on things. So it was just like gold gray, ivory. And then the flowers, we did like a very fall theme, like lots of greenery, ivory, burgundy, mauve. A lot of designers recommend picking like five or six colors to complement each other so you aren't freaking out. Like if your colors are pink, you have to get that exact pink on everything. And then it's just like an overload of pink where you can pick multiple colors and can still look nice. Yeah, in, inside for our reception, it really helped that it was all kind of like toned down, natural. You know, the tables were wood, the chairs were kind of wooden, so it had that, all those colors were able to pop really well. Really, we can kind of get into like the week of and like the wedding itself, because that's like the craziest time. So, from setting our date, like when we wanted a fall wedding, I like hardcore researched, and October 27th, I said it was always in like the 60s and since that's the end of hurricane season like October is super dry in Ohio and like the only chance to fit as a hurricane so the end like I like was banking on it was going to be okay and I kept checking like forecasts from even like six weeks out which is kind of fake but it's a predicted and everything was fine and then the week of it was like oh it's going to be 45 degrees and rain and when I'm nervous usually I'm I will still eat like I like stress eat like I was like, I was so anxious and upset that like I literally could not eat that week. I could not finish meals. I was having breakdowns. And what we did to resolve that is we did have to buy a tent last minute, which was like a few hundred dollars. That More was annoying, <laughs> but it helps a lot because it went on the outside of our venue where the bar was, where more people could hang out. So our venue was very small, intimate on the inside. And then we still did it outside, but kind of sprinkled in the beginning of the ceremony. It was a little bit colder, but we just like reminded our guests like, hey, bring an umbrella, bring a coat. Like we're still doing this. I want an outdoor wedding. And it happened and it was so pretty. So don't be afraid of the weather. I wish I wouldn't have freaked out so much. Yeah, my tip would be not look every day leading up and don't look six weeks out. And that's what the only complaint about our venue is it was so small. Like I absolutely loved everything, but since it's so small, an indoor ceremony would have worked. But everyone would have had to stay at their tables, it would have been awkward. So like maybe try, if you're gonna do an outdoor ceremony, make sure you have a for real backup. Like I really thought I wouldn't need a backup. So look into that. So I think one of the last things that you really wanna do, uh, be right before the wedding, and, and it's really the week of, is 
make sure you have everything done. So we kind of sat down and went through that again, just to make sure that we're really, you know, have completed everything before the wedding. That way we weren't really missing anything. And that way we could actually, you know, start packing for the wedding. So and then just to get into the wedding, did things go wrong? Would I want to redo anything? Blah, blah, blah. I would definitely have time to like get ready slow. I had time to get breakfast with my bridesmaids the morning though. We got ready at a very slow pace, plus even the hair and makeup people finished early. Um, I only had three bridesmaids, I had three groomsmen. I think that's really helpful. I mean, you do you if you want to have eight or ten. But it's nice because you can stay on track with your hair and makeup. There's not a lot of chaos going on or different opinions. And, you know, people can still mean a lot to you without being in your bridal party. I could have probably chosen, like, 12, honestly. I started getting, like, really nervous before. Not to, like, get married, but I think just, like, I don't like to be in, like, kind of crowds, really. So I was really nervous. I remember talking to my one bridesmaid. She goes by like a different name now. And I called her her old name because like I wasn't even like processing. Like I like, couldn't feel anything. And I was honestly like shaking. Like it was really crazy. So have time for that. Um, nothing went wrong except it sprinkled, but we still did it outside. Um, my only complaints is it was like, I guess, like when Halloween parties were. So a lot of people left early. And that kind of, I knew family were going to leave early because they were all two hours away. But like friends left early too and that kind of upset me. But I guess it's okay. So we had to move up like our sparkler send off like a whole hour up. And we already bought less sparklers so we knew people went not stay until the very end. But I don't know, that kind of sucked. But it was fine. So the people that really mattered the most stayed and we kind of had fun until the bar closed and everything. Do you have any regrets? Or not really regrets. I think it really helped though that, you know, I booked a hotel. Not only did it allow me to hang out with my groomsmen, nice to not have to worry about driving essentially the, you know, the 45 minute drive um, the day of, and I'm really only like 10 minutes away. Um, and it allowed us to have a place to stay at that night as well, which was really helpful. So I would definitely recommend. Finally, something I want to mention is a videographer. We could not afford a videographer in our budget. And then also have my friend Courtney decided that she was going to start doing like videography for weddings right and before. I didn't really expect a whole lot like I was just glad she's gonna do a video I'm gonna link it above but it turned out beautiful so if you can't afford a videographer don't be afraid to trust like a student or someone's just getting into it they can be amazing or even someone that I know now she's gonna start upping her prices because she is legit don't be afraid of someone that's only a few hundred dollars like if their work is good like you have to start out somewhere yeah, we were like really wanting to get a videographer and at the time that we were like mainly booking, you know, we, we didn't really have a budget to like, you know, kind of splurge on a videographer and then randomly, you know, two weeks before our wedding, you know, our friend Courtney decided she wanted to jump into it really. And you know, this was her second wedding to do and we would just let her go with it and you know, it turned out very nice and you know, yeah, overall, I think the wedding went really well. Yeah, you know, it was a good time to see friends and family. It's also good to, you know, devour our cake. Our cake was all vegan. Uh, I need to mention something. I forgot to talk about catering. Since a lot of our viewers are vegan, uh, my dad paid for the catering, so we didn't do an all vegan catering. I probably would have if it wasn't for him doing that. But we did a pasta bar, so it could be vegan. We made sure nothing was cooked in butter or any of that. The breadsticks were vegan, the salad was vegan, you got your sauce, and they had like even like caramelized onions and like roasted mushrooms, artichokes, all that. And we had vegan cheese um, at our table with Parmesan and our vegan friends that like, came by and grabbed it. So that was still like pleasing for everyone. And then like you said, our cake was vegan. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like was there was none left over. Um, I was talking to my family and they, they were like- was good. I was talking to my family and they were like nervous about vegan cake because there's people that just hate vegan stuff. Everyone ate it. There was not even one piece left and people that know me know that I love eating food regardless if it's sweet, savory, I'll eat. If it tastes good, I'll eat it. So I was a little upset that we didn't have any extras, but. My last kind of tip is just enjoy it. You're engaged, you're going to be getting married to your husband or your wife for the rest of your life. So don't let all the little things get to you. It does get stressful. We didn't really enjoy wedding planning, but we didn't like make a fight out of it. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. We obviously enjoyed our Thanksgiving meals. He super enjoyed it. He's already done. Um, so that was an A plus. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, share it, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't, and we will see you next week.